Now let's take a closer look at the molecules of life, or organic molecules. We'll see that carbon is the smallest atom in the periodic table with the largest number of alternative bonding possibilities. In other words, it has a valence of four and can share four electrons with as many as four different other atoms, or molecular groups. Because of this, the carbon atom is able to participate in molecules of diverse shape. It could do this even before the origins of life. Once again, the theme is shape. Okay, isomers. These are molecules with the same molecular formula, but different shapes as shown here. At the top of the slide are two structural isomers of C4H10. Geometric isomers occur when the same atoms or chemical groups can be on the same side or on opposite sides of a double bond. We say cis or trans, respectively, as shown in this case for C4H8 in the lower part of the slide. And there are the hydrogens on either opposite or the same sides on the left and right in this illustration. Again, different shapes. A third kind of isomer occurs around individual carbons in organic molecules, further increasing the diversity of their shapes. This is the optical isomer or enantiomer. Recall the tetrahedral shape of orbitals around a carbon atom. This shape forms when four different atoms or chemical groups form covalent bonds with the carbon atom. The two molecules on this slide look alike, but in fact they are different. You could prove this to yourself by making them with a ball and stick modeling kit, or just watch this animation. It highlights the fact that the molecule on the left really is different from the one on the right, and in order to make the two molecules the same, you would actually have to break some bonds and make some new ones, as shown here. We say the carbon is an asymmetric carbon, or an asymmetric center. Another word we use sometimes is chiral. So optical isomers form around an asymmetric or chiral carbon. Clearly not all carbons in a molecule are going to be asymmetric. Again, carbon-based molecules lead to a maximum number of different shapes because of its ability to participate in isomeric forms of molecules. Carbon was selected as the basis of organic molecules precisely because of this asymmetry that I've illustrated its ability to form a maximum number of different covalent bonds and thus allow nature to experiment with diverse molecular shapes in coming up with the molecules of life. This chemical experimentation began long before the first cell ever formed on this earth. We need to talk about one more thing. A common theme in the chemistry of life is the creation of large molecules or macromolecules from smaller ones. Most macromolecules are polymers, and they are built from monomers or monomeric subunits. You probably already saw polymer synthesis by dehydration reactions, and polymer breakdown by hydrolysis. So this slide illustrates generic polymer formation by dehydration synthesis. In this synthesis, a hydrogen and an OH is removed from the participants to make water. That's why the reactions are called dehydration reactions, or sometimes condensation reactions. On the bottom of the slide, a polymer is being broken down by hydrolysis. In this reaction, water molecules are added across the molecule. Here they go. Water goes in, and the monomer comes out. This is the reaction that characterizes the digestive breakdown of what we eat, as well as cellular recycling of its own macromolecules. We'll soon see that in addition to RNA, DNA, and polypeptides, which are true polymers formed in condensation reactions, two other important biomolecules, fats and phospholipids, are formed by dehydration synthesis and digested by hydrolysis.